Hi everyone. Wow. Everything. Everything. Everything and anything. And everything else. You want to know about camels. Correct, Karina? Yes. Anything at all you want to know about camels. Okay, I've got a lot of questions about camels. Okay. We have some beautiful camels. In fact, they are bored. They, they're normally over here in this pen giving camel rides. And they're crying out to the world that they want to be doing camel rides again. Yes. And so they're out here in their pen. It's a beautiful day. So while they're out there, we thought we would get this on video for you. Yes. Blue sky, northern Kentucky, green grass. It's spring. It's a little coolish still as the temperatures are going up and down. Yes. But you don't have a coat on. I have a no. coat on. <laughs> so, okay. So kids, mums and dads, we're going to learn about camels. Camels, are they reptiles or mammals? <laughs> Camels are mammals. She got it right. <laughs> Camels are mammals. They're not reptiles. Correct. Okay, Karina yes. is right. So they are mammals because they have hair. All mammals have hair at some point in their lives. Um, and they also nurse their young with milk. Uh, so yes, these guys are camels. We have dromedary camels here. Now there are two. Do people drink camel milk? They do. I've actually drank camel milk before. Really? Yes. Okay. <laughs> a lot of people who have allergies to normal cow's milk can handle camel milk. So yes, um, it's very, yes, they use this a lot, especially in the Middle East. Is it strong? Um, it tastes very different from cow's milk. It's kind of hard to describe, but it is very, it's a very different taste from cow milk. So we have four dromedary camels here at the Ararat Ridge Zoo. What are Zoo dromedary counter. camels? Great question. So a dromedary camel means it has one hump. So there's two species of camels. You have the one hump camels, which are our dromedaries here. And you can remember that because dromedary starts with a D and a D on its side makes one hump. And then we have our Bactrian camels, which are the two hump camels. And you can remember that because a B on its side makes two humps. Hey, that makes sense. I like that. Yes. A D, one hump. Yes. A B on its side, two humps. Two humps. Mm -hmm. So, so we discriminate against two hub camels here, is that? I, yes, we do. <laughs> we just have dromedaries here. Uh, they serve our purposes really well. So camels are related. Both species are related. They can interbreed. Uh, you get something, a hybrid called a tule, which is a really big camel, and they do not have three humps. They just have one big hump. So, so you don't get one with one and a half humps? No. Well, I guess one and a half humps would be two humps. Yes. <laughs> Technically, I yes. was thinking about that. You know, a very <laughs> profound statement. If they had one and a half humps, it would be two humps. Yes. So then they'd be a two hump camel. Yes. Not a one hump. <laughs> okay, all right. All Let's right, go on so here. these are dromedaries and uh, they are native to the Middle East and Northern Africa, the Sahara Desert, the Arabian Desert kind of area. The Bactrian, the two hump camels are actually native to Asia, a lot of the Himalayan mountains, the Mongolian plateau, that whole area. But like I said, they are part of the same biblical kind, which is the camelid kind, and that also includes llamas and alpacas. So a llama and a camel can actually reproduce to make a hybrid called a comma. So a all one biblical kind. A comma? A comma. That is a camel llama cross. <laughs> oh, how do you spell that? C A M A. Oh, I thought you said comma. You know, like, you know, comma. It sounds like, yeah, like the <laughs> punctuation. <laughs> so we have four boys here. The one closest to us is CJ. Now, CJ just recently moved down from the Creation Museum. He's lived there for many, many years. But we are transferring all camel rides to only the Creation Museum. So he has come down all here. All camel rides only to the Ark Encounter. I'm so sorry. Yes, only to the Ark Encounter. That is a flub on my part. Yes, so all camel rides will and only be at the Ark Encounter. And we're converting the area at the museum into more interactive spaces yes. for yes. animals for families. Yep. So CJ, as you can see, he's standing next to Bocephus here. And you can see how much bigger CJ is. Now, CJ is kind of a mutant camel. He is unusually large. So he is much bigger than our other three boys. Did he enjoy moving down here? Um, <laughs> not particularly, but he was brave. He did his best. Is he getting used to it now? Yes. So uh, the trip down was, you know, very different for him. He hasn't been in a trailer very often, but he's doing great now that he's here. Okay, I have to ask you a question, Karina. Yes. When Leanne was getting the donkey some food or whatever, she reckoned it was smiling. I've seen their lips move in all sorts of directions there. Look, are they yes. smiling? Yes. <laughs> so they Look, have see that. Is very... that a smile? <laughs> <laughs> it could be a smile, yes. They have very prehensile lips. You can see they're actually split down the middle on the upper lip. And that helps them manipulate leaves off of branches so they can eat around thorns in the desert. So they have to be able to eat pretty much anything they can find because they are desert dwellers. So those 
flexible lips, those kind of fingers they have on their upper lip, that helps them manipulate their environment and get all those leaves off the thorny branches. Now, do they have different personalities? They absolutely do, yes. Camels are actually very intelligent animals, um, very huge personalities. So CJ here is our big goofball. If there's mischief to be had, he will get into it. Um, he is definitely our mischievous little boy. He loves toys. We give him lots of toys to keep him busy. The one next to CJ is Bocephus. Uh, Bocephus can be a sweetie, and um, but since CJ's come down, he's trying to be tough because CJ's a lot bigger than him. So um, Bo's still kind of trying to figure out his place in the herd now. Luke on the other side of Bocephus there, he's our sweet, goofy, kind of laid back boy. And then way in the back, that red camel, that is Archie. What is wrong with Archie? Is he not like the... <laughs> Archie here? is playing with a box. Oh. <laughs> so, oh, that's a, yes, oh, that camels a box love boxes. It. Yes. So I don't even think there's food in it anymore. He just likes to play with it. <laughs> He's a little special. <laughs> so yes, all these boys are just a joy to work with. They're a lot of fun to play with. Um, so camels have been used by many cultures for a very, very long time, um, especially in the desert. These guys are really reliable. They're more reliable than horses, so they're used for anything. Most notably, they're used for hauling and transportation. So camels can be conditioned to carry up to 1,000 pounds for 25 miles a day. So very, very strong, durable animals. And they're also used for their hair. You can make clothes out of their hair, their fiber. They use their milk. So camels are very, very well adapted to the desert. They have a lot of amazing adaptations. I, I often wondered, you know, when, when God made horses and camels, whether, you know, one of their functions was to be transport for me. Yes, yes. So they they're sort of definitely, suited to it, aren't they? Yes. So they can carry lots of weight. Um, we can kind of go head to toe on the camel and kind of point out all their amazing adaptations that allow them to survive in the desert. So one of the biggest misconceptions about camels is that they have water in their humps. That is not true. Their humps are actually fat and cartilage, and that actually serves a purpose. So the fat is storage, kind of energy storage for them. So they can go weeks without eating, and it also keeps all the fat on one place in their body, so it helps them cool off in that desert heat. So can they go weeks without drinking? They can go several weeks without drinking water, too. And when they do find water, they can drink 30 gallons in 10 minutes. Now, the reason they're able... I imagine when the fat breaks down, it also yep, breaks so down Yep, so they actually water. will store water mostly in their bloodstream. Their blood cells are different than ours. So most hu humans and then most mammals, we have circle-shaped red blood cells. Theirs are oval-shaped, and they can expand to two and a half times their normal size to hold all of that water. So they can go a long time without food or water. Now, if you look at their legs, you guys might see some calluses on their legs. They've got a big one on their chest called a pedestal. That's so when they lay down, their joints are protected as well as their organs and their rib cage. It supports them, it lifts them off the sand, and it allows them to not be burned by the hot sand either. Now, they've got those lovely feet. They do not have hooves. They actually have a foot. They each have two toes with toenails each and they kind of spread out when they walk. So it kind of acts like a snowshoe for the desert. So when they walk on those sandy dunes, they don't sink into the sand, they kind of walk on top of them. So they can weigh anywhere from 1,200, 1,400, 1,600 pounds. CJ over here likely weighs close to a ton, but they will not sink into the sand, they actually just kind of walk on top of it. And then a lot of people also ask us, what do we do with them in the winter time? Because a lot of people associate camels with warm temperatures. And the answer is we really don't have to do anything because camels are actually really well adapted to living in cold weather as well. Um, deserts actually typically get very cold at night. So camels can adjust their internal body temperature between 93 and 106 degrees and be totally fine. They will grow these thick winter coats, which they guys have still. They're all starting to shed. It's shedding season. So they'll lose all that thick winter coat and they'll have a very, very short coat through the summer. But so these their guys love be snow. From 93 to 106. Yep. And Whereas they'll be totally fine. <laughs> our, our body temperature has to be around about 98 or yeah, so. Yeah. If we it? have a 93 degree or 106 degree body temperature, we're, we're in trouble, we but need to go to they the are totally yeah. fine. So they actually love the snow. They love playing in the snow. We'll actually make snowmen for them and stick them full of veggies. They'll actually walk around the fence line after a snow and eat all the snow off the top of the fence. They'll roll in it. 
Uh, they'll play in it, so they really enjoy the winter. And those Bactrian camels, the two hump camels, they're actually found sometimes in the Himalayan mountains, which can be as cold as negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit, and they are fine. So we really don't have to do much for our camels in the winter. They do just fine with the cold temperatures as well. So, so these camels give camel rides. Did you have to train them to do that? Yes, so we did have to train them. So um, CJ here was actually trained by our staff. Um, so we have our facility supervisor, his name is Josh, and he did a lot of work with CJ, and he trained him just in a couple days to do rides when we got him. Now these three over here, Archie, Bo, and Luke, are actually rented from another zoo, and they train their camels to be ridden as well. So camels are very intelligent animals, very easy to be trained. Um, Bo's kind of giving you a good look at his little snoot there. So you can see how his nostrils can actually open and close, and that helps during sandstorms, so he can close his nostrils. He's also got the long eyelashes and ear hair to help keep sand out, too. Well, we got some good, good video there of yes. CJ. Yes, adorable snoots. One of my absolute favorite things to do is to squish a camel snoot because they're very, very squishy lips. Uh, they love to give kisses. Uh, they can be very affectionate animals. We do a lot of relationship building with these guys um, so they can be very affectionate and you know they do do rides here so we don't let people kiss the camels here no <laughs> so when you're riding a camel you'll just be on their backs um, so one of our zookeepers will always be handling them walking them around because we and have that have a relationship special, with them a special saddle you put on them or? yep we do have a saddle so um, a lot of people who have ridden camels before probably in the israel or other areas in the middle east they had the camels cush or lay down in order to get on the camel well, we would have to do that several hundred times a day because we can have hundreds of camel rides a day. And that's, that's not very, um, that can be really annoying for the camel. So we actually just have this chute over here. So the camel stays standing all the time and he can just walk in this chute and we'll have the people just get on him while he's still standing. So it's right at the level for people to just kind of step on and over that saddle. And then we strap you guys in and then we do a nice figure eight here and then we will stop at the end to do photos. They do know how to pose for photos, so um, everyone can get a good camera shot of their friends and family on the camel before coming back through the chute to dismount. Oh, well, there you are. Everything you want to know about camels. <laughs> I've learned a lot of things about camels today I didn't know. Good. So, and how many legs do they have? They have four legs. Good, I just wanted to check Karina. <laughs> she, she knows her stuff, wow. Four yeah. legs, you really know that, that that's incredible. <laughs> That's why I went to college. <laughs> so, exactly. And two eyes. They do have two eyes. And one yes. mouth. One mouth. Wow, look at that. So, yeah. Anyway, we've had a fun time learning about camels. Any any other facts that you missed about camels? Um, well, boys are called bulls and girls are called cows. So a lot of bulls people. Bulls and cows. Bulls and cows. So oh, okay. now we do not have intact males here um, because... They can be rather nasty, so <laughs> they are all boys, but um, these guys are very friendly. They've worked around people their whole lives. A lot of people maybe might be scared to ride a camel, but these guys do great. It's basically their job. They are kind of a working animal, um, so they're very used to people. They've given hundreds and hundreds of rides in their lifetime, um, and, you know, it is, it, is, we, it is voluntary for them. We cannot force a 2,000-pound animal to do something it doesn't want to do. There's nothing that I can do to make 2,000 pound CJ do something he doesn't want to do. So they're like a working dog. They like to have a job. They like to have a purpose. So these guys um, do a great job doing rides. They do take turns. Uh, so I do encourage you guys to come try a camel ride when you come visit us. And just think, nowhere in the world other than here can you get a camel ride and see With Noah's Ark, Ark yep. as you walk around the camel. And what yes. do you do, like a figure eight here? We do do a figure eight, yep. And we have a 250 pound weight limit on our camels, so we'd never put more than 250 pounds on them at a time. And um, yeah, so it's very, very safe there. It's voluntary for them. Um, so we'd love to have you guys come ride a camel when you come back. It is $8 per person. So yeah. Well, there we are. And if you've got any other questions about camels, you can put them in there and Karina is yes. very good at going in there and answering all your questions for you. Yes. Uh, so our staff love to interact with you, and we love you interacting with them. So, Karina, thanks. Leanne, thanks for being, <laughs> being the food person today. Yes. Yes, and entertaining the camels. Dangerous in there with yes. thousands of pounds of camel.
and I stayed outside the fence. We do have four pastures and two other yards plus stalls that they all rotate through. So they're all in this one pasture right here right now to graze it down, but we don't just keep them in this one yard all the time. They actually have four separate pastures, two yards, as well as indoor stalls that they can go between. So they yeah. are. you're getting a lot of behind Pretty the scenes spoiled. stuff. When, you come <laughs> in, when, they, when kids and mums and dads come and visit the ark and come here to the zoo, and they've seen all these programs, they'll know so much more about what goes yeah. on here. It'll mean much more to you to come and see all the animals here and yes. to see Karina and Leanne and the other staff in person. Wow, you can, you can go up to them and say, I saw you on TV, Yeah, <laughs> something yes, like that. Yes, we'd love to talk to you guys, answer any questions you have. If you're interested in being a zookeeper or learning more about our animals, please ask us or one of our other staff walking around. We'd love to answer your questions. So, so there you are, hope you enjoyed the program. Thank you.